Vindicta is an early access first person shooter. It's available for the Vive and Rift for about $15 US. Here's my review of it in its current state as of October 2017. Starting with the story. The general idea is that you're infiltrating an evil corporation to stop them creating an evil robot army. The story starts off okay, but then kind of disappears after the first 5 minutes and doesn't really make a reappearance. The game features a smattering of voice acting, both from your own character and from a fairly run-of-the-mill voice guide. While I did enjoy it initially, the amount of repetition eventually took the magic out of it. Alright, good. Hello Agency. This is the safest spot we could find to start infiltrating the facility. On to gameplay, which will see you doing a mix of running, gunning, destroying, unlocking, climbing, ducking, and throwing. A good amount of variety, but nothing all that groundbreaking. The game is divided into 5 levels, with more to come, each featuring a number of checkpoints that can be directly loaded to once unlocked. All in all, the game took me around 4 hours to finish, but does in my opinion have a good amount of replayability, on account of it being pretty damn enjoyable. Next up is Enemy, and there's a fair few of them. You've got robots with guns, flamethrowers, chainsaw arms, mounted guns, and mortars, robot spiders that bite, zap, or explode, flying drones that shoot either lasers, missiles, or red lightning, and mutant grasshoppers. The AI is functional, but not much beyond that. Now for weapons. You start each level with two swords and a pair of empty holsters, which can be filled with the wide range of weapons littered throughout the levels. They include pistols, SMGs, rifles, a shotgun, a grenade launcher, a rocket launcher, and a machine gun. Reloading is accomplished by lowering your weapon to your belt, which I found to work flawlessly. Overall, the guns feel good to use, and the game's micro-celebrations when you score a headshot, multi, or chain kill is super rewarding. The swords are somewhat effective, but don't offer any ranged ability or bullet deflection, so aren't really viable for long-term use. The game features several weapons that can be wielded two-handed, or one-handed with a slight penalty to accuracy. Unfortunately, the two-handed grip didn't quite feel right to me, to the point where I usually preferred them one-handed. Leading us to health, which is non-regenerative, but can be replenished using health power-ups, which are fairly abundant. Now for difficulty of which there are no settings, and between the enemy's slow, easy to dodge bullets, and their inability to lead targets, I very rarely came close to dying. The only times I did was during the annoyingly unforgiving climbing stages, which, due to the often large gaps between checkpoints, became for me a thing of dread. Next up is locomotion. The game offers arm swinging locomotion, as well as traditional smooth motion. The latter of which I personally preferred, as I found it to be more responsive and easier to run and gun with. It is, however, very touchy. A potential deal breaker for some is the game's failure to accommodate the weak of stomach, lacking both the option for teleportation or any comfort options. Moving on to music, which I rarely noticed, but in the times that I did, I felt it complemented the gameplay well. That leaves us with graphics, 
which are well executed, although I did experience the occasional judder on my 1070. Now for the verdict. This game does have some room for improvement, which is what you should expect from an early access title. That said, in its current state, this is already a solid first person shooter and a ton of fun, definitely worth a look for fans of the genre.